And now, TSPN News with Tom Slavik. Comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN streaming on the World Wide Web and now on demand at TSPNTV.com. Hi everyone, Tom Slavik. Uh, welcome to TSPN's News for Today and with me today is uh, Plymouth City Manager Jeff Gardner. How you doing, Jeff? Great, Tom. Good to see you. I'm really glad for you to come by. Uh, it's been a while since you've been here. It is. has been. A lot of, a lot of fun stuff happened in Plymouth. Okay. Yeah, there is a lot of fun stuff happening <clears throat> in Plymouth. Of course, uh, to a lot of people, it is a gateway into Amador County. And the Shenandoah Valley as well. And the Shenandoah Valley yeah. as well. Wine country. Yep. Uh, you know, things have been, uh, we've annexed a bunch of property over there. We're looking at maybe doing some development. I'm going to meet with the developers again tomorrow. Uh, there's hit a couple of snags on getting some of their infrastructure finance, but they're moving forward. They've uh, got design plans, on conceptual plan on the, on the phases and stuff. So we're well, just... That sounds exciting. Why don't we take a break and we'll come back. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, that, okay? Okay. All Great. right. So stay with us right here on TSPN. We'll be right back after this break. Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Tom Slavik with City Manager of uh, Plymouth, Jeff Gardner. Jeff, you were um, talking about the, uh, you know, the... Uh, some of the development going on out there, and I guess it was on the Reader property. Is that right, what's right. Happening? He's got two developments. One that he's working on currently called Zinfandel Ridge. That's a 365-unit development, and uh, he's in the process of, of getting all his design work done, the engineering. He needs to put a road in. Uh, he needs to get some infrastructure financing for the sewer water lines, the road development, all that. And then he can start building. He, he hopefully was going to start this year. It looks like it might get pushed off next year. He's looking to maybe find some partners on that, uh, some builders or something to do a joint venture now. He's got to come up with some financing to do all that infrastructure work. Okay. I always think, like, you know, there's a, a lot of potential for Plymouth to grow with some housing since it's so close to, you know, uh, uh, to El Dorado. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, right over there to... Uh, I can't think of the name of the place right now, but, you know, when you come up... Uh, Rancho Marietta. Yeah, yeah. And, and that. And uh, oh, and even the other, the other way, too, where you just come right across, like, from La Trobe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it seems to me like over there, there are still building houses. They are building homes, and that's one of the reasons why this, this builder is so positive and gung-ho about building homes in Plymouth. He's actually gotten a very good response. Uh, to the idea of building homes. Uh, obviously, the response from the people is oftentimes different from the response from the bank that wants to lend you money, however. Okay. So, <laughs> in this case, the bank doesn't think the real estate market may be as quite here as enthusiastically as our builder does, but, uh, you know, I'm confident that he's going to get some financing and this thing's going to move forward and we're going to have some beautiful homes in Plymouth. It's okay. Be a great place. Okay, let's uh, move on to the intersection going out there on 49. Yeah, we... Uh, it's really exciting. We, we've signed a cooperative agreement with Caltrans. We've got our funding all the way through construction. We just put out an RFP and we selected a, an engineering group, Omni Means, and we're going to negotiate a contract with them. That will be brought back to the council in May. And we hopefully will get going and be up and running and have that thing being built by a year from July. Okay, so was the group approved? The group, had, uh, well, the group was chosen by an interview panel. Okay. Um, effectively, the council will, we, the council will, uh, if we can negotiate a contract with them that's fair and meet, it comes within our funding budget, then the council will approve that, and they will move forward on the preliminary uh, planning specs and, and final engineering and right away acquisition services for for the intersection. Okay. Now I know when you come when you first sat in here, you you kind of said, like, you know, I don't like. Uh, uh, roundabouts. It's not necessarily that I don't like them or anything, but that's what's going to be uh, put in there, right? Right. The, the, the Caltrans chose the design. It was It's their intersection. It's their highway. There was sort of a misnomer that the city of Plymouth was in control of all that. We really weren't. We did go through a long, a lengthy 10-year process to get to the point where Caltrans made that decision. Uh, when it came down to it, after everything was said and done, it was cheaper, it was safer, it was uh, better throughput. Everything about it was better, um, and they thought than, than a signalized intersection. So, 
that's what that's okay what most of us in northern california we're not too uh, familiar with them i i think so you know uh it's going to go in and we'll, we'll, we'll fact, see it will probably change my mind when i when i go through them well i hope so in fact this is going to be the first roundabout in district 10. um there are there are roundabouts going in everywhere all around us and uh, the group we've chosen has been involved in, in building a lot of roundabouts in a lot of places. And they, they've told us they can, they can bring us the roundabout that's going to make the difference in our community, and we hope that's true. Okay, moving on, uh, the Aurora Ditch. Ah, the Aurora Ditch. What's the status on the ditch? Well, as you know, and, and as your viewers know, uh, the city of Plymouth has got a, a diversion right on the Aurora Ditch uh, for, on the Kasumnas River, from the middle fork of the Kasumnas River, the south fork of the Kasumnas River, and six other points in between. That right's been there since 1851. It's a pre-1914 water right, and it's equal to 31 cubic feet per second. For us, it's a diversion right, and we divert water down into town. It's an earthen ditch. It's 18 miles down to town from the top diversion point, and we lose a lot of water in the process. Uh, but uh, we have been continually diverting water for as long as I can remember. Okay. And um, we we would like to divert more. Any chance we can to divert as much water as we can, okay. uh, we do. Speaking of uh, lose it, is that a right to use it? You have to use it or you could lose it? Uh, there's a lot of different <laughs> interpretations of water rights and the usage and how, how, how much, how often, and, and, and how continually you have to use those. In our, in our situation, it's a diversion right. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to store it. We do have another water right that the state gave us on Big Indian Creek, which we have an opportunity to build a reservoir on. Okay. But the Arroyo Ditch water is a diversion right. So uh, there, it's it said if you don't use the water for up to five years, then you potentially could lose your you lose some or all of your diversion rights. It is a pre-1914 water right, which none none of which have been successfully challenged at the at, at, in the court up, up to this date, as far as we know. Uh, but our objective is to, is to continue to divert the water, bring that water to the North County, and provide it to the ranchers, uh, uh, vineyards if they need it, anyone we can, to use that water for the benefit of this county. And what's the cost to maintain that yearly? Uh, the cost is, uh, depending, it costs more when you ramp it up at, when you're beginning, in the beginning of the season. Um, we would ultimately like to run the ditch year-round. Obviously, if it's a really wet year, you, you can't be running the ditch because you have to have it turned out because there's too much water coming down the facility. Uh, but, if it, but if it's a low water year like it has been this year, we've been able to run it. We couldn't run it during the drought period, but we have been able to run it since December, and we've been running it continuously, um, or before then, and we've been running, running it continuously uh, all the way into town and past town, and, and we filled some stock ponds. Uh, a local vineyard is using some of the water because they had planted some new grapes. And they were going to die if they didn't get them if they didn't get them watered. So they are actually the ones that are are funding the cost to run it this time. And and uh, well, what is the cost a year? Approximately? Well, it's about four to eight thousand dollars a month, depending on what part of the year it is. So eight eight thousand a month when you got to have multiple crews out there shoring the ditch up, cleaning it, cutting the brush, weed eating, that kind of thing. Uh, you have to run two man crews because for insurance purposes. But in the middle of the season, if you can just have two guys going up and down the ditch all the time, that's uh, about 4000 a month. Okay. So it's, it's not free to run. It is not free to run. <laughs> okay. That water is not free. And we, need to, we like to impress upon the people who are trying to bring water to that we need do, their, do the, their help in the season. Do solution. the ranchers uh, uh, pay for the water? Uh, Anything, to, to, to this date, uh, the users, I in, guess I'd say users, everyone. We're in the process of trying to uh, w negotiate with the landowners west of the city. Uh, there is a water district, Willow Springs Water District, that, that has been non operational, but they're getting themselves back together. And hopefully uh, they, can, they can bring the representatives to the table and we can get together and figure out how we can make it work for all with of us. With the ditch running through and when you're running water through, do they have rights to, to some of the water? Um, going through the property? Technically, uh, I, we believe there are one or two, one or two uh, properties that do have some water rights for some of that water. But theoretically, the ditch is owned by the city of Plymouth. Okay. Uh, it is main by the prop maintained uh, west of town by property owners because they have a use for the water, whether it's being provided by the city through our diversion rights or if it's just collecting runoff. And they can fill their and they can fill their uh, ponds with that their okay. their stock ponds. Okay, 
We're going to take a break. When we come back, maybe we can talk a little bit more about that or move on. All right, okay. so stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.